So first of all, uh, evening everyone. My name is Amit. I have total overall experience of around 15 years and my training experience is close to around 10 years. So as far as uh, today's agenda is concerned, so we would talk about Microsoft Azure. So we'll uh, try to understand what exactly Azure is and what exactly it does and what are the benefits, what are the drawbacks in case we use Azure over the other cloud services what we have. Now a few ground rules uh, before we start. Uh, in case anybody has any questions, so after the session you'll have a round of uh, question and answers and probably you can ask your questions then because uh, it becomes difficult for me to address the questions within the session. So first of all, the thing is that we will go with the session. Once we are done with the session, then uh, probably we'll have a Q&A round wherein we'll talk about your questions, we'll try to address why should you go for Azure and so on, right? So we'll try to understand and talk about all those things. I mean, if something is left basically, so we'll talk about all those things during the session itself, right? So as far as the agenda is concerned, we would talk about what is cloud. So we'll try to understand what is cloud and uh, why should we use cloud? What are the benefits of using cloud and so on? Then we'll give you a brief of uh, what Microsoft Azure is because if you are aware, there are a lot of other cloud platforms which we have in the market these days. So some people might be already working on other uh, cloud platforms like AWS is one, Google Cloud is another one. So a lot of cloud platforms are available. So we'll talk about what exactly Microsoft Azure is. So cloud from Azure perspective. Then we will talk about the job trends. So we'll try to understand why should you learn Azure. I mean, just to give you an overview, Microsoft Azure has acquired uh, a lot of market from AWS because few reasons behind it. Number one being cost. So Azure is uh, pretty cheap when you compare it with AWS. So we'll talk about all those things as we go further. Then we'll talk about Azure services, which includes a lot of different combination, permutation combination of services which you can use as far as Azure is concerned. Then we'll talk about pricing. Then there's a small demo, which actually I forgot. So after our session, we'll have a demo and then we'll talk about the QA. And then we have certifications. As far as certifications are concerned, probably I'll just give you a brief of certifications in the beginning itself. So uh, when you go ahead and attend the course for Azure, so there are three certifications which are available uh, till date. One is the Microsoft Developer Certification for Azure. So that talks about 70532. So this is the code. Then we have 533. So 533 talks about the infrastructure services uh, certification from Microsoft. And then you have the architecting services, which is basically 534. So these are three certifications which are available uh, as far as my Azure is concerned. So from the developer's perspective, if you would like to go ahead and understand how do you go ahead and develop solutions on Azure, then probably uh, the best course for you uh, to attend would be 532. If you want to go ahead and talk about infrastructure side of Azure, then the certification what we would talk. And if you are familiar with the things, you're already working on Azure past one, one and a half year or maybe two years and you have some experience working on Azure. So then we would talk about the third certification, which is my, what do you call, architect solution certification. One second, I guess somebody is asking me a question. Yeah, okay. Uh, I would request everybody to please keep this for later. But if you have any questions in between, just make a note of those questions so we can address those questions at a later point in time. So let's just start with Azure. And uh, the first thing we would try to understand is what is cloud? Why do we have cloud? And why exactly the companies came forward and then adapted this technology? So we'll talk about a lot of things as we go further. So now when you talk about uh, cloud computing, first of all, I'll just go ahead and compare what we were doing initially and what we are doing now. So previously, when you talk about if somebody is from the infrastructure backend, would be able to understand in a better way. Initially, when we started working, I mean, if you talk about 10, 15 years back when I started working and I started my career, so we were talking about, I of course started my career with IT. The company which I used to work with used to support a particular client. And for that client, they used to do the IT, they used to take care of the infrastructure, they used to take care of the help desk and all those things, right? So initially, during the course of time, what happened was client became uh, much more educated that these people are charging me for each and everything, wherein I am owning everything. So I own the infrastructure, I own the bandwidth, I own the storage, I own everything, but still these guys are charging me just to support that, right? So the client became intelligent and they started hiring people. They started moving the things at their end. So these companies, like uh, big giants, I would talk about Accenture is there, 
Wipro in India is the Infosys is they have Capgemini, Cognizant. All these companies are losing on revenue. So they wanted to talk about something which they can show to the client that yes, this is what we are implementing and this will save a lot of money for you. So these all companies came out with a new terminology which was cloud computing. So when you talk about cloud as an old solution, no, I don't think so. Cloud is an old solution because the first product which was a cloud product was my Microsoft Hotmail. We say Microsoft, but Hotmail was the first product wherein we were using somebody else's infrastructure and still hosting our domain and everything. I mean, still hosting our mail and everything, right? So now during the course of time, what happened was that the company started pitching the clients with a new terminology, which was cloud computing. So they used to tell them that we own everything. We own the infrastructure. We own the services. We support these services. You just have to pay us for what you use, right? So when you talk about the benefits of cloud computing, if I go and pitch a solution to my client. So I would talk about cost. I would talk about my scalability, elasticity. I would talk about my performance. I talk about my speed. I talk about enhanced productivity and I talk about reliability. So just to give you a brief in terms of cost. So when I compare the cost uh, with the other solution, the managed services solution, so over there, I was paying for the complete thing. I was paying for the infrastructure. I was paying for the licenses. I was paying for the bandwidth. I was paying for the air conditioning. I was paying for the water and everything what we used to use in data centers and to run the servers, right? So when you talk about cost-effective solutions, so when you talk about cloud computing, the people just pay me for what I use, right? So this is one of the benefits of cloud computing, what we talk about today. When you talk about global scale, I'll give you an example in here. Uh, let's just take an example of Amazon. So right now from 11th to 14th, I believe if I'm correct, May, Amazon is running a sale, right? During the sale time, you see a lot of people going on buying stuff. If you compare in a normal scenario or a normal day, there are not so many people getting onto the site and buying stuff. So what happens is if I have maybe 50,000 more people logging onto that site, I need extra servers to support those many people. Right? Now, if I talk about a normal scenario, I would have to go ahead and install servers, I have to configure servers, and once the sale is finished, I still would have to keep the servers over there. Initially, people used to do that, but now if we have something called cloud, so that is something which is not a good idea, right? So when you talk about cloud, we have an option wherein we can just go ahead and scale in and scale out whenever required. So when I have this sale, Amazon or Flipkart or Mintra or whatever site sale is running, so I can go ahead and scale up. Once everything is done, I mean, once my sale is finished, I can go ahead and scale down. Now, similarly, I can give another example. During the course of time, you know that in the morning, you have more number of people logging onto the site. In the night, you have less number of people. So I can schedule it, right? So I can schedule that in the morning till evening, you have more number of servers provision. And during the course of time, you have less number of servers provision. Now, talking about the performance, so when you talk about performance, we talk about it's more like a corporate data center, what we use as far as my cloud environment is concerned. And we have different locations where these data centers are placed, right? So when you talk about these different locations where these servers are placed, so I can just go ahead and put a server to my nearest possible location. Whereas I'll give you an example. If you talk about managed services, say for example, my client is in US and I'm hosting the servers maybe in India, right? So there would be a lot of bandwidth requirement a lot of performance issues and so on. So in the cloud environment, we don't have these kind of issues with the performance and with the speed. And at the same time, we talk about productivity. So this removes the need of racking or stacking because I, I do not have anything at my end. So I don't want the complete infrastructure to be setting up at my end and I don't need extra bandwidth. I don't need extra people to do that. So I can use that time. I can utilize that time doing something more productive the disaster recovery and business continuity is much more easier when you compare in a cloud solution rather than a managed solution. Because when you talk about a cloud solution, a cloud solution is something which is spread across the globe. We have so many sites, we have so many backup sites, we have so many data centers, we have so many regions which uh, support the cloud environment. So the redundancy is always in place. When you talk about a normal infrastructure, I talk about managed services or I talk about something which we used to work with initially. We have to put a lot of effort. We have to put a lot of cost. We have to put a lot of money in setting up a disaster recovery site. Wherein in the cloud environment, it's much more easier. So when we talk about the cloud environment, we talk about reliability. So let's just jump on to the next slide. Okay, uh, one important thing again, if anybody has any questions, please make a note of it. At the end of the session, we will address all those questions, right?
Now talking about what is cloud computing, it is use of remote servers on the internet to store, manage and process data rather than a local server or a local uh, personal computer what we have, right? Cloud computing is the delivery of uh, on-demand computing resources over the internet on a pay-per-use uh, basis. Now, I have two definitions on this slide. If you open the internet, you will see millions and millions of definitions for cloud computing on each and every site. So we have different sites, we have different definitions. But end of day, the cloud computing talks about a model wherein I can pay for what I use, right? So this is what is the simplest possible definition what we have for cloud computing and make sure that you make a note of it or you just remember it. So cloud is no rocket science. It's something which we just pay for what we use, right? So we don't need to own the infrastructure. We don't need to own the licenses. We don't need to own the bandwidth. Everything we use, we just pay for what we use. So going further, let's just talk about the deployment method. So what we see on the slide is uh, three different things. One is my public cloud, one is my private cloud, and one is my private cloud, which is hosted by a service provider, okay? Uh, there is one more, which is my hybrid cloud. So I'll give you an example of each. Now let's just take an example of public cloud. So Amazon is there, Azure is there, Google Cloud is there all these companies host a public cloud. That means if you are an individual, you are an end user, you can just log into any of these, pay for what you want to use. There are different ways of paying, of course. You can reserve an instance, you can just go ahead and pay for yearly contracts and so on. So I would not go into that because this is just a refresher session. I mean, the first session, introduction session to cloud. So I'll not go deep into technology for the time being. So when you talk about uh, public cloud, these three companies host public clouds. So in other words, uh, the idea behind this is that uh, they will host the infrastructure. Everything you want to use, you just go ahead and use and just pay for that. So this is something which we talk about public cloud. Now, the other type of cloud is my private cloud. Now, if somebody is aware of VMware or somebody is aware of Microsoft SCVMN, which is my system center virtual machine manager, so these are the two things using which I can go ahead and host a private cloud. So the idea behind this is when you talk about private cloud, everything is owned by the company. So this is one way of uh, hosting a private cloud. So everything is owned by the company. So when I say everything is owned by the company, I own the infrastructure, I own the license, I am responsible for the air conditioning, I am responsible for the data center, I am responsible for each and everything. Right. So this is one type of private cloud what I have. The other type of private cloud is, let me just give you an example. So the idea behind this is that I have a private cloud. I mean, I want a private cloud. I go to Amazon or I go to Microsoft. I request them that just allocate few resources for me, right? So, I mean, you can say reserve few resources for me, right? So they go ahead and allocate a set of resources. So when they do that, they are basically allocating those resources from the public cloud what they host, okay? So the idea behind this is these companies host a public cloud and then they are allocating the resources for me for which I pay off front, right? So nobody else can access those resources. So that is a private cloud, which is not on-prem, but is hosted by a third party, right? Now a company like Amazon or a company like Microsoft having a cloud can host a public cloud, can host a private cloud. So that makes it a hybrid cloud. So this is the definition of my hybrid cloud. So my Microsoft is an example of hybrid cloud. Amazon is an example of hybrid cloud. Google maybe is an example. IBM's software is an example of private cloud. Now the other example of private cloud, which we host SCVMM, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, which is a Microsoft product. You can just go ahead and read about that. Then of course, public cloud is pretty simple. Amazon again is an example. Microsoft again is an example. Google again is an example. So a lot of examples. So it's a combination of all these things. Okay, now the question is why Azure? Now if you talk about my personal opinion, I prefer Azure because it's much more user friendly. I'm not sure how many people have joined from the Linux background or how many people are from the Windows background. But when you talk about Microsoft, Microsoft is known to make things which are user friendly. I would not talk about the other Microsoft applications or softwares, but over the period of years they have done a lot of enhancements, a lot of things. Uh, let's just take an example. For example, we would take an example of Windows, right? For an end user, if an end user is uh, supposed to be working on Linux operating system, how difficult his life would be? Try to just imagine how difficult his life would be, right? Whereas when you talk about Windows, 
you just use your mouse keyboard and all those user friendly things microsoft is more user friendly when you compare to the other solutions what which are available in the market these days the capacities and capabilities of my microsoft okay Azure has made significant advantages during the year. So I'm not sure how many people are aware, but Azure was released, the first version of Azure, which was for the internal use, Microsoft internal use, was released in 2006. It is very recent. I would not say 2012 even, right? 2012, 2013, when people started using Azure. Uh, Microsoft released a new portal, Azure portal. I believe, if I'm correct, July 2015. And since then, they had made significant improvement in the way they were delivering the services, right? Now, they have a lot of different services. They are, uh, the portal is more user-friendly. There are a lot of things. What are, what are there inbuilt in the portal and you can do? So I'll show you a few of the examples as we go further. Now, it now offers a set of features and capabilities far surprising its competitors, right? So there is a comparison online which is available, what Microsoft can deliver and what Amazon and Google Cloud can deliver. I always take an example of only Amazon and uh, Google Cloud and compare it with Azure because these are the big players, right? There are thousands of small players which are available in market these days, but I, I just take example of uh, big ones. So these are a few examples. Now, just to give you a brief, everything on the internet, I'm talking about websites, are IS based, right? And IS is a Microsoft product. So end of day, when you talk about past services, example I can give you in here is app services, which is basically delivering the same capability of an IIS server. So, I mean, of course, it's better. So when you compare somebody using a Microsoft product and would like to go ahead and move to a cloud solution, would like to definitely go with a Microsoft product itself. So past capabilities are great. .NET compatibility, because it is based on IIS. So yes, .NET compatibility is great because .NET is a Microsoft thing. And then you talk about my security offerings. Uh, some people, although do consider Amazon better than this, but then yes, there are a lot of improvements which have been done during the course of time. I guess somebody has a question. Uh, give me one quick minute. Let me just check. I would request everybody. It's very difficult to answer everyone. Please make a note of the questions and we will address all the questions in the Q&A round. Okay. I hope everybody is with me. Okay. Then you have hybrid solutions for seamless cloud connectivity which are great when you compare it with other things because being Microsoft again. Then you have integrated environment, the gentle learning curve. Now, I hope everybody has gone through some or the other Microsoft trainings during the course of their career, right? And you know that Microsoft gives you the best courses which are available in the market, right? I mean, try to understand. Let's just compare AWS because I train on AWS also. So finding a resource over the internet for AWS is much more difficult when you go ahead and compare it with finding a resource online, which is a Microsoft course, right? So there are many things which we can talk about, but let's just keep it simple. And then we talk about the enterprise agreement advantage. So if somebody has a volume licensing contract with Microsoft, that means they are eligible for internal use licenses. Internal use licenses talks about Windows 7 licenses, Windows 10 licenses, server operating system licenses. So in that particular case, what happens is Microsoft gives you free licenses for Azure also. I would not say free, but then during the initial time, it's it's kind of free, right? So once you move to the cloud services and you're comfortable with each and everything, moving to the cloud and all those things. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's always like they'll make you use this service. And once you're comfortable with using that service, then you can go ahead and decide whether you would like to go for it or not, right? FYI, Microsoft gives you 30 days free trial. So in case you would like to go ahead and check how it exactly Azure works. So you can sign up for a free Azure trial in which you would get 13,300 rupees, Indian rupees, or approximately $200 for spending and learning Azure. So you can just go ahead and do that. Now when you talk about current job trends, now during the course of time, I did read somewhere, the information may be wrong also because I did read it somewhere in the blog that Microsoft has acquired close to 29% of the market. It's not that they acquired the market from other cloud players and the major one being uh, Amazon. But then the idea is that a lot of things going on, a lot of people have adapted cloud. So Microsoft is selling their solutions also. And then of course, few people would like to go ahead and move to Microsoft because Microsoft is much more cheaper. The best example I can give you is Flipkart. I'm sure a lot of people on this particular uh, session, 
would be aware of Flipkart. So Flipkart around three months back moved to Azure. So you can just imagine the amount of openings they would have in Azure, right? Okay. Now talking about what is Azure. Okay. So Microsoft Azure is a growing collection of integrated cloud services. Three services we talk about. One is SaaS, one is PaaS, one is IaaS. IaaS is infrastructure as a service. PaaS is a platform or product as a service and SaaS is software as a service. So we'll talk about during the course of time what these services are and what are the benefits, what are the drawbacks. Should you move to these services if you're having a current infrastructure environment running or not? Okay, so we'll talk about all these things as we go. Now Microsoft Azure is a growing collection of integrated cloud services which developers and IT professionals use to build, deploy and manage applications through our global network of data centers. So when you talk about this, there are a lot of different locations of uh, Microsoft Azure data centers which we have. In India itself, we have three locations. One is in Pune, one is in Mumbai, and one is in Chennai. There are new locations coming up every now and then. I believe they have new locations recently started in Korea also. Not north, of course, the south one, okay? So let's just uh, see more options I mean, as far as my Azure is concerned. So now when you talk about different domains, in Azure. So we talk about compute, we talk about storage, we talk about my networking and content delivery, CDNs, and we talk about migration, helping people to move to the cloud. Then we talk about uh, security and uh, identity compliance. So in here we talk about Active Directory as a service. How do you use Active Directory as a service and integrate that with Office 365? So these are the examples. We talk about messaging, which is my notification. So let's just try to understand what compute is. Compute is my virtual machines which I can create in my Azure environment. Then you have databases so I can talk about my SQL. Because when you talk about database, here being a Microsoft product, we would only talk about SQL. We would not talk about maybe MySQL or Oracle. So majorly Microsoft supports and SQL runs best when you talk about Azure. Then we have CDNs, management tools. So a lot of different uh, domains are available as far as my Azure is concerned. So we'll talk about that. Now when you talk about the compute domain, building level products, which dictates and determines the execution of an application in the Azure platform. So when you talk about my compute, it talks about my CPU, it talks about my memory. So how much memory you want to assign, how much CPU you want to assign to a virtual machine so that it can execute or maybe you can say process it, okay, simpler terms. Now talking about cloud services, so a lot of different services what we have. You see my virtual machine, you see my VM scale sets, then you have my Azure containers, container registry. Now you guys would have a question, what is Azure container, what is container registry? So this particular session is not for me to explain you this, because we just have one, one and a half hour, we don't have complete time, otherwise it would have been a pleasure to explain you what Azure container registry is, what VM scale set is, what is a cloud service and so on. Okay, now talking about the compute services, uh, you see virtual machine, you see my virtual machine scale sets, you see my container. So just to give you a brief virtual machine, it's just a VM what I create. Now when you talk about Azure, there are a lot of different concepts which will come across during the course of time. So virtual machine is just like my physical machine, it's running on a hypervisor. Now for hypervisor, you would like to go ahead and understand what is a hypervisor. I'm sure a lot of people on the session understand what is a hypervisor, but in case you need more details, so there's a course which we run for Microsoft trainings, uh, sorry, Microsoft, so you can just go ahead and go through that particular course which talks about what is a hypervisor and so on. Then you have my scale sets, so this talks about auto scaling, I was giving an example of scaling in, scaling out, so this talks about auto scaling. Then you talk about my container service. So this is basically for hosting these solutions which are optimized for Azure, which do not require to interact with the operating system. So we can talk about that. As I said, when we do the complete course, then you have the container registry, which talks about the images across all different types of Azure deployment. So, I mean, if an application is to be deployed in a container which uses registry, so we talk about a container registry thing wherein you can just go ahead and save the information. Then you have functions which talks about uh, writing codes regardless of infrastructure and provisioning of my server. So it runs great with that. Then you have my batch, hundreds of virtual machines and how do you go ahead and scale those. Then you talk about stage data and execute compute pipelines on those virtual machines again. So then you have my service fabric. So this is something which simplifies my Microsoft Risk based application deployment and lifecycle management. 
and this helps me to deliver low latency performance and uh, efficiency at a massive level right then you have a cloud service so uh, when you talk about cloud services this focuses on apps not on hardware so I'll give you an example so the idea behind this is I need SQL I need IS to run a service right so I can just go ahead and bundle few VMs which will act as a cloud service right and I will have my IS running which will deliver my front end and I have my SQL running which will uh, deliver my back end so this is what my cloud services are now talking about the networking let's just try to understand what exactly networking is first of all now giving you a, a very basic example if you talk about your home infrastructure right so your home network so everybody I'm sure everybody has internet because without the internet first of all there is no life the second thing is you will not be able to log into this particular webinar so I believe everybody has internet and when you talk about internet you might be using a laptop or a desktop so in that particular scenario what happens is when you talk about connecting using a phone or maybe connecting a laptop or a desktop so you need to connect it to the router so the internet service provider gives you a router wherein the internet line is terminated and all your internal machines internal machines I would say is the laptop and the desktop using which you are connecting would get an IP address right so I mean in simpler terms what I'm trying to say is that all the machines which are required to be connected to the internet are combined or joined together using this router now initially we had switch before that we used to talk about hubs right so when you talk about the networking part as far as my Azure is concerned we talk about few things related to how do I go ahead and join these virtual machines together and how would I go ahead and join these past services with IAS services and so on so there are a lot of things which we can talk about as far as my Azure is concerned so when we talk about that we talk about something called VNets okay then we talk about something called my load balancer because of course you need to run the service on two parallel machines if the service is not running on two parallel machines it's very difficult for you to go ahead and uh, make sure that you have 100% availability for that particular application all the time so we talk about my load balancers now I also can talk about my traffic managers wherein different people are logging on from different locations right so if a user is logging on from US he should be redirected to a server in US and that should be load balanced right so we can talk about traffic manager now if you want a direct connection with the Azure cloud in other words I am a company A I go to Microsoft I tell them please host my private cloud they host my private cloud and they go ahead and uh, set up direct connection to my network so that I can go ahead and access that cloud as my local machine so they set up an express route okay now if I want to go ahead and manage my cloud using the VPN if I talk about managing my cloud so how do I go ahead and connect to the cloud to manage the different services running in the cloud so I talk about my VPN okay so when you talk about the networking domain it's a very huge thing and it's very important for everybody to understand how networking works as far as my Azure is concerned right now one very good thing with Microsoft is that they give you all the details how these things work right now if you go for an Amazon training in the Amazon training what happens is they'll just tell you that this is supposed to work okay but uh, when you come to Microsoft the best part is they'll tell you this is how it is supposed to work and why this is supposed to work this way okay then you have my networking domain so I named different things I have express route virtual network load balancer application gateway which I did not talk about but then again when we have a training the full five-day session or maybe of the weekend sessions so we'll talk about this traffic manager CDN's content delivery network the best example I can give you for content delivery network is my YouTube okay so we have pops uh, in each and every location and we have one server on which the content is loaded so on the pops what happens is if somebody is uh, requesting for the content the content from the main server is downloaded to the pop from that particular location that is delivered to my end client so I mean again maybe you don't understand what CDN is right now but during the course of time when we have the full session so probably you'll get more information of what CDN is and in case you want to go ahead and search yourself what a CDN is the best example is YouTube and I hope everybody watches YouTube okay so these are the different definitions so this is virtual network performs my network isolation and segmentation load balancer so this is for load balancing different applications which we have running in the environment then you have the application gateway 
So this is my virtual uh, appliance providing the application delivery controller as a service. Then you have my Azure DNS. So first of all, DNS is my domain name service. So every website has an IP address attached to it. So the idea is every website is running on a computer which has an IP address. So how do you go ahead and reach to that particular IP address is my domain name. Uh, so we can talk about much more, not just giving you a small example, but then we have time constraints. So again, I would love to speak on this when uh, we have a full session. Then you talk about the content delivery network. I gave an example of YouTube. Then you have my VPN gateway. So this is in case you want to go ahead and administer my cloud services on the Microsoft network or, or my cloud. So I would go ahead and use my VPN gateway to connect to the cloud service. Traffic manager is for uh, geographical, I mean, distributing traffic using the different geographical locations. Then you have express route. So this is my direct connection to my Microsoft data center from my on-prem. Then you have my storage domain. So when you talk about my storage domain, so we talk about four types of storage in Azure. One is my blob storage, wherein you can save your VHDs, the VMs which are running in your cloud. Then you have your file storage, wherein you can save your files. Then you have my table storage, and then you have my queue storage. So these are the four types of storages which are supported by Azure. Sorry, it's a cloud storage solution for modern applications that relies on durability, availability, and scalability to meet customers. Then you talk about massively scalable, so you can store the information. It's a huge amount of data which can go on that particular story. Then you talk about elastic. Elastic means, so whatever you need, you can just go ahead and request for more. When you're done, you can delete the files and it will go ahead and just start charging you for what you're using. And has auto partitioning system, so you can just go ahead and automatically load balance your data based upon the traffic. So you see, this is what I was talking about blob queue file table so table is more like my database blob is my raw storage queue is my uh, messaging storage and then you have my file storage so this is for my files and here is a small brief definition of each and everything so you have blob as your blob storage is a service that stores unstructured data in the cloud as objects so this is your raw storage then you have my queue storage this stores my queues for messaging systems on the cloud then you have file storage, so this stores my file, and this is SMB based. The new Azure portal uses SMB 3.0. It supports 3.0, and the files you can store on that. And then you have my table storage. So this is my storage in which you can save unstructured data, because the structured data has a schema, so this one does not. Okay, then you have web and mobile services. So basically, this, what you see on the screen, is a part of PASS. PAS and uh, we talk about something called app services wherein we can go ahead and build different applications we can go ahead and build different mobile apps so basically these are web apps these are not mobile apps but they are uh, something which is configured and is compatible with my uh, mobile devices then you have my API apps you have my logic apps then you have my event hub which is used for events then you have my notification hub and then you have my Azure search so these are the services which are there for my mobile and web and this as I said is a part of my pass. So let's jump, jump on to the next slide. So and I mean basically try to understand what we have web apps. Now again uh, giving an example generally if you want to host a website you host a website on either an IS server or an Apache server. So when you talk about a cloud solution we talk about something called PAS pass right. So when you talk about PaaS, Microsoft gives you two types, rather three types of services. One is my app services, which is for my websites. Then you have SQL databases, which is used for hosting my SQL services. And then the other one is my Active Directory in the cloud, right? So that is for hosting an Active Directory environment, right? So when you talk about my web apps, using web apps, you can host a website in the cloud. Mobile app and web app are same, but this is optimized for mobile devices. Then you have my API app. So this app is my service which supports different APIs of the cloud and on-prem. Then you have my logic apps. So this logic apps basically provide a way to simplify and integrate my scalable integration and workflows in the cloud. 
then you have my notification hub so notification hub is used for sending different notifications just like you have notifications in your mobile apps so in here also we have my notification hub using which you can go ahead and send notifications on your websites or maybe mobile services site which you run on the azure environment then you have event hubs which is nothing but a collection of different events which can be stored over there then you have my azure search so this is a cloud-based uh, search as a service solution that delegates server and infrastructure management to Microsoft. So you give everything to Microsoft that you're responsible for doing this. And then you have my Azure SQL database. Of course, you have two options. Like everybody knows you can host a database. You can just go ahead and uh, deploy a VM. Once you deploy a VM, you can install SQL services on that. Once you install SQL services, you can use that as a database. But if you don't want to use that as a database, you can use my Azure database services, which is a part of PaaS. So let's just talk about that. In this, we have my SQL databases. I hope everybody understands what a SQL database is. So it's a relational database service, uh, which is based on uh, the Microsoft SQL database server. So the SQL server, which Microsoft Azure uses is 2012, right? So in case you would like to make a note of it, so they use 2012. Then you have something called document DB. So this is a fully managed NoSQL database service built for fast and predictable performance, high availability. So this is something which, again, not many people work with, but then yes, it's there. Now the other one is Redis uh, Cache. So this is more like a cache, which is basically used for uh, sorting the information which is available on the database, right? So the first thing what we talked about, wherein we talked about compute, where we, uh, we talked about my uh, virtual machine sets, so that was a part of IAS. This is the part of PAAS. Now, if I'm hosting a complete solution and the end user is getting the software, so then I talk about SAAS. Then you talk about the enterprise integration services. So in this, we talk about two things. One is my service bus and the other one is my SQL server stretch database. So service bus talks about the uh, Azure service bus, which is a reliable information delivery service, which is kind of a broker between the third party communication which happens with the Azure, right? And the other one is MySQL server stretch database. So stretch database migrates your cold data transparently and secures it to the Microsoft Azure data center. Now it depends whether you wanna use it or not. Again, these are my enterprise integration services and they are additional to IAS and PAS. So then you have security and identity services wherein we talk about my Azure Active Directory. I gave an example of Azure Active Directory previously. Then you talk about my multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication, I can give you an example. Generally what happens is when you log on to a website, so few websites, you get an OTP, right? And then you are able to log into the website once you put in the OTP, right? So multi-factor authentication is for that. So we talk about security and identity services. So we talk about all these things, what you see on the screen. Key Vault saves all the information related to your storage in a vault, right? So they have your uh, primary and secondary keys to access the information from the storage. Then you have my Azure Active Directory. So this talks about a multi-tenant cloud-based directory. I'm not sure how many people understand Active Directory. But it's, it's kind of, if you're working in an organization, it's one of the most important part of the organization. So it's, it's more like a security boundary, wherein all the resources of your organization, of your enterprise lies, and you can just go ahead and access the resources based upon the access level which is assigned to that. Now you can move this from your on-prem to the cloud and use it as a service. So when you talk about Azure Active Directory, so Azure Active Directory is also, what do you call, part of PaaS, P-A-S. Right. Then you have my Azure AD B2C. This is again a part of PaaS. And then you have Azure AD Domain Services. This is again a part of PaaS. Multi-factor authentication rather is also a part of PaaS. I'm sorry, Azure AD Domain Services is not a part of PaaS, but it's a part of IAS. So in this particular case, what happens is you have one domain controller on-prem. You have a domain controller running in the cloud and you need to have a connection between the cloud and the on-prem. So you need to have either an express route or a VPN connection between these two sites. And you have a full blown domain controller running over there in the cloud, which is basically available for your local also. So this is what we have as far as my AD services, Azure AD services are concerned. So Azure Active Directory and Azure AD B2C is a part of PaaS services, wherein Azure AD services are part of IAS. 
Okay, then you have monitoring and management services wherein we talk about my traffic manager, we talk about automation, we talk about ARM, and then we talk about the Azure portal. Okay, so traffic manager we did talk about as far as my Azure portal is concerned. So we talk about how do I go ahead and manage my resources, how do I go ahead and monitor my resources. So this is something which I will show you in a demo. Then you have my resource manager. So ARM is something which is new. Previously, we were not using ARM. As I said, that is your design and developed a new portal which was live, live from July of 2015. So this portal was based on ARM. So the Azure Resource Manager, we call it Azure Resource Manager. And there are a lot of differences between the older portal and the new portal. If somebody has seen the older portal or is working on the older portal, so uh, you'll, you'll see the difference. There's a huge difference. So there are a lot of things, old portal, new portal, but again, our time does not permit uh, permits us to discuss on the old portal and the new portal. So let's just skip this for the time being. Now, as far as my automation is concerned, there's something called OMS. As far as this is concerned, this talks about how do I go ahead and create run books and automate the process. Now let's just go ahead and try to understand this with an example. Now previously what used to happen was when a developer needs a machine, so he used to request a machine and the request will go to his manager. The manager will approve the request. Once the request is approved, then it will go to a system admin. Once the machine is configured, then the information goes to somebody who will patch the machine, install the antivirus software and a lot of different things. So this whole process used to take 10 days, okay? Now with Azure and with automation in place, we can do this maybe in few hours. Now let's just try to design and understand a flow chart. Developer would request a machine. The information is sent via email to his manager. The manager approves. As soon as the manager approves, the information is passed across to the Azure portal where the provisioning is done, provisioning of the VM is done, right? At the same time, if the manager rejects it, so the information is sent back to the user that your manager has rejected and I cannot just go ahead and give you a machine. So this whole process can be automated using something called flowcharts, which we can design. I mean, we, we call them run books, of course, as you see written on the screen. So we'll talk about that as we go. Uh, I'll just have to check. Now talking about the pricing. So Azure pricing talks about pay as you go model. So there's a reseller pricing which comes in picture. Then there is something called a volume licensing pricing which comes in picture. So when you talk about Azure, Azure would bill you just like, if you remember, uh, I'm not sure how many people have more than 15 years of experience. So the reason I'm saying that is because if you have 15 years of experience, you're quite old enough to understand what I'm saying. Because when I was small, I used to go to an internet cafe and I used to pay them 10 rupees for using the internet for an hour or so, right? So Azure works on the same model. So if you're using that for an hour, you'll just go ahead and pay Microsoft for an hour. Then you have my reserved instances. So in case I go to Microsoft, tell them that I need these many machines for an year. So Microsoft will say, yes, that we will go ahead and reserve these many instances for an year. You pay us upfront cost. And of course, there's a lot of saving involved in that. I mean, we, we, we pay, 75% less amount when we just go ahead and pay off front for a year. Okay, now talking about demo, let's just jump on to a demo. I'll just go ahead and log on to the portal first of all. I'll show you both the portals. Let's just talk about both the portals because I've been talking about older portal and newer portal and you might be thinking about what the older portal is and what the newer portal is. So let's just talk about that. So right now I'm just going ahead and logging on to the new portal and this is my ID. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer so I get a lot of money from Microsoft every month to spend on this and to test this. Of course, not a lot of money, but yes, I get some amount of money from Microsoft to check this. Okay, so this is how your portal looks like. What you see in here is my dashboard. Then you have my VMs, you have my virtual networks, you have my storage. So you see I have two subscriptions, both are for my trainer account and then I have one pay as you go. So you might be thinking what is a subscription? So this is kind of, for the time being you can just say it's the level of access what we get to get your machines and so on. So a lot of things are there. 
then you have my virtual networks I have my storage accounts I have my SQL server resource group app services and let's just go ahead and build a website using app services so I don't have anything right now so I'll just go ahead and create a new app service so if you remember in the slide there were two things one is website and then there was a mobile site so this is my mobile app of course you cannot build a mobile app in here so somebody thinking that yes I can now do wonders with this now you can just build a ecosystem wherein you can put everything over that so let's just uh, talk about this app services so I'll create an app service environment so this is basically my website local so this is any random name of course it should be unique so basically it's trying to figure out if this name has been given to anybody or not if this name is not given to anybody it will go ahead and show me a green mark over there what you see now application insight is for application monitoring I'm not sure how many people are aware of uh, something called app dynamics which was recently purchased by Cisco if I'm correct okay so I go with this I will leave everything to default so right now when I click on create website so it is uh, just going ahead and trying to build a website for me so this is my web app so this is a part of pass so this is currently in progress so we'll wait for one or two minutes okay so let's just jump on to this so I have this now this is my website now anybody and everybody on this call can open this website so I have few templates in here so I'm trying to build my website now try to understand what used to happen initially so initially I had to build a Windows server then I had to install IIS on top of it once I installed IIS I had to configure it so that can be accessed from an external source right and after everything is done I had to go ahead and then install the website over there okay let's just check where do we have this or where can I download it from uh, let me just go to a different site because I believe all this is junk I guess this should work so I have a 5 MB template so it's currently downloading that so it should take some time and once this is done I can use a FTP program to upload it so while this is running, while this is downloading, let's just go ahead and do something else. Let's just go ahead and build our first VM. I already have few running in here. Oh, okay, it's done, I guess. Yeah, okay, so my website is done. It's downloaded, so let's just open my FTP. Try to upload that. Okay, so let me just go to my portal some people might be thinking what exactly I'm doing I'm basically building a website so you can imagine how much time it takes to build a website now so I don't have to go ahead and install a machine I don't have to go ahead and install IS I can just simply come in here and build my website so this is my FTP link and this is my username and I don't remember the password so I'll just quickly reset the password It says the name is in use. So let's just check this one, I guess. I am sure this one would not be in use. So it's resetting my FTP credentials, and once it's done, let's just go in here, copy that again, and check. okay let's just check so it's going ahead and trying to connect so I am already connected I guess yeah okay so I go to my site and then I go to my route so if you're not understanding what this is I'm sure after attending one course you will be able to get what I'm doing but if somebody is a web developer so you will be able to understand what I'm doing so right now I'm using my FTP client and uploading the files which you see in here and once my files are uploaded I will go ahead and open the site and show you what we see over there so it may take maybe I guess three or four minutes so while this is running let's just jump on to creating a VM 
and giving you a small demo on how do I go ahead and create a VM. So for that I go to virtual machine, I go to add and what you see is my marketplace. So you have, oh, is it complete? Yeah, okay, all right. So I have my Windows server, which is what I need. I will create one Linux machine also and show it to you. So I have my 2008, I have 2012, I have 2016. If you want Windows 10 machine, Windows 7 machine, that is also possible in the cloud. If you're planning to deliver those machines using VDI. But for the time being, I'll just choose Windows 2008. And then I click on, and this is my test VM-1. So you want to use SSD or HDD, so I guess I will go with HDD. This is my username. So I prefer using my username always. It makes sense. And if somebody understands what is the resource group, good. If you don't, that's also okay. Because you, I believe few people might be having knowledge on what Azure is. Few people might be very new. Okay, let's just see. Okay, let's overwrite. So these are my plans, and this is what I will be charged in case I use it for a month. So it's still loading the pricing. So I'll go with basic because this is the cheapest possible plan. This is somewhere around 885 Indian rupees. Yeah, 885. This is per month. So this includes my one core. This includes 0.75 of memory, one disk, 300 IOPS, and a Windows 2008 license. So you see, it's pretty cheap. So I say no, or you can, I, I'll just choose yes. So if you're familiar with this code, if you're not probably, then you'll have to attend the complete session. So I click on OK, and I have my Windows 2008 release to session. OK, so it's deploying a VM, which you see in here. And in the meanwhile, the good thing is that my website has been uploaded. So let's just browse it and see. Okay, so let's just check. So if you remember, this is what we downloaded. And anybody who wants to see this can open this PW local as your website.net. It's live. Now there are a lot of questions which might be coming up. If I have to update this, how do we do it? What do we do? So everything is planned. I mean, everything has way of doing those things. So uh, again, we don't have enough time to discuss all that, but still, yes, there is a way of updating the website in case you want. Okay, so once this is done, my website is done, and uh, we can access it as you did see from anywhere. Now let's just go ahead and get another machine, which will be a Linux machine. So I guess I will go ahead and uh, get a Ubuntu machine. And this is my LTS long-term support. So I would be getting a machine for my Linux with 16.04. So I type in the password and I choose an existing resource group. So again it will ask me where do I need to save the files and so on. And of course the pricing. So I'll choose the same one, cheapest possible one because again this is just for testing. So I have this 885 INR and I will go by default. So no fancy stuff, just go by default, click on OK and we are done. So you see how easy it is to deploy the things, to manage the things and so on. So this will take uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, I think. Let's just check. So it's stopped. So this is the one which I created previously. Then you have one running. So this is my test machine. Then I created one test VM1 which is creating and we'll wait for another one minute or so and we'll have the fourth one in here. Okay, 
<clears throat> so while this is running, let's just open the slide and check what all things are left. Okay, certifications. I have already talked about certifications. But just to give you a brief, we have MCSA, which includes two certifications. So if you're doing this, you can do this as a developer. So that is uh, 70532. Then if you want to do it for an infrastructure engineer, you have 70533. And if you want to go ahead and uh, work on this for maybe two years, and then you would like to go ahead and do an architecting certification, that's 70534. So these are the three certifications which are available. So once you do one, that makes you an MCP. Once you do two, which is developing and uh, implementing, that makes you an MCSA. And once you do all three, that makes you MCSD. So these are the certifications which are available as far as this is concerned. So this was my last slide and I hope it was good to have some knowledge on what Azure is and how it works and there are more courses which you can do get more detailed overview or maybe more detailed information of how this works. Now let's just jump onto the portal and see. So this is my fourth machine. So we have two created. So these two are the ones which we created. So this one is my Windows machine. This one is my Linux machine. Okay. So this will take some time, I guess, maybe another 10, 15 minutes or so. And once this is done, I will be able to RDP to it or connect to it. So if you want to see how do I connect to it, so I'll just open this and click on connect. Uh, okay. Access is denied, I guess. My ID does not have access on this. So there's another way of doing it. Maybe they have some problem with the portal also because every now and then they have a lot of issues with the portal because they are still working on this. Okay, this is the public IP using which I can access it. So let me just copy this and then open my remote desktop. And I guess this is the same IP. Let me just double check. Yeah, this is the same IP. So I'll just I guess I might have connected this machine previously. Okay, so this is my machine which is running on the cloud and I can access it from everywhere. If you see this, oh, there is there are new updates installed on this. Good. So I chose the second one. So I have this one CPU, vCPU, 1.7 gig, 75 gigs of memory, 2008 release to data center edition and Windows is activated. So if I want to go ahead and install IS on this to make this a uh, web server, so I can do that. Or I want to install SQL. For SQL, of course, we have less amount of memory. So I have to go ahead and add more memory. So if I want to go ahead and edit this, I can simply go to the portal, which you see in here, and access my machine, and then go ahead and, uh, what do you call it, change the size. So if you want to change the size, you go to size, and you have an option to select a new one. Of course, I don't want to do that because it will cost me more money, but still you can do that from me. So let's just check what happened to our deployment. Okay, one succeeded, which is this. This is a Linux VM, so of course it works much more faster. I mean, the deployment is much more faster. So we have my Linux VM and then the other one is still deployed. So these are a few things which I wanted to show you. Now, the last thing for the day before we end is the Q&A, the question and answer session which we have. Now, let's just start with questions first and then I'll try to answer. So, I'll just open this and let me just read the questions which people have. Okay, I hope I answered the certification part. Okay, when does the course start? And I assume that you're the instructor. So, probably you'll have to check the schedule on the website. So I would appreciate if you can just go ahead and check the schedule on the website. Then does this course prepare you for all the three certifications? No, for all the three certifications, you have three different courses. One, as I said, is for developers. One is for the infrastructure engineers. And there is one for architecting. Architecting is majorly three days. So eight hours each, you can calculate it. Then the other ones are 40 hours each, five days and five days, if you do it at a stretch. Yeah, as far as the beginner is concerned, this course is for the people who are starting from the scratch. Okay, so this is for the beginners. S3 has an option for archive storage. What is similar here? Yes, we have an option for uh, archive storage in here also, for which of course you're charged less. For being a Azure developer, one must have .NET skills. Yes, 
you should have .NET skills because there are a lot of things using which we, we basically use it. Does Azure has all database services like AWS which supports pretty much all uh, RDBMS? Yes, not all because Azure is majorly for SQL. Okay, so we would concentrate on SQL when we talk about Azure. Now, just to answer Anil also, a lot of applications which do not run on AWS run perfectly fine on Azure. The reason is because there are applications which are .NET based, right? There are applications which are requiring SQL, so they work good on Azure when you compare it with AWS. What about Google Next? So Google is still building their cloud. It's not that matured. If you want to go ahead and get a copy of this class, you can log on to the website and you'll see the recording over there. Then you have Vincent. Vincent wants to know. See, when you talk about security, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's a very broad term, actually. When you say, how does security work in Azure compared to AWS? So it's a very broad term. So probably you'll have to go ahead and ask more specific questions. Now, how automation works in Azure? So it's inbuilt, first of all. So that is one way of working with automation on Azure. The other one is you can go and buy a separate product, which is Microsoft OMS. Yeah, Microsoft Operations Management. So this is what I was not able to recall. So the automation works with OMS and then there is also an automation account, which I'll show you in here. So if you want to go ahead and see this, so we can create run books in the automation account. But if you want to go ahead and do more things, so you can go with operations management. Too. So you can integrate this with your cloud. So if you want to talk about this, this is a separate product altogether. So you need to buy it separately. There is a separate licensing with this. So approximately 901 is the most expensive one which you can use, which talks about automation, insights, analytics, security and compliance, and then it talks about uh, protection and recovery. So this is again 1,800. So this talks about backing up, recovery, and so on. So this is a separate product. So this is how automation works. Have you seen any client hosting their data warehouse system in Azure if yes, What is the performance impact when compared to on-prem servers? See, when you talk about data warehousing server systems, there are a lot of case studies which you can find over the internet that people are using it for sure. I can forward you a case study in case you want. Just mention your email ID in here in the chat. Some tools like Spark and Airflow don't work on Windows. Should I choose Linux on Azure? Yes, you can choose Linux on Azure. Nobody is stopping you to use Linux on Azure. A lot of people still run Linux on Azure. Only SQL Server, is there any version of Hadoop from Microsoft? There is no version from Microsoft for Hadoop, but yes, you have a Hadoop cluster which you can build in here. So if you want to see that, I will show it to you. So you have my HD cluster. So you can build a Hadoop cluster in here without any problems. Okay, then I have, can I mix both AWS and Azure when I'm architecting some applications? Yes, you can. But what happens is, if you're doing an AWS, one thing I want to tell everybody, please never in lifetime compare AWS and Azure. These two are different companies, have different products, because I have delivered a lot of trainings on Azure. I have delivered a lot of trainings on AWS. When I go to AWS training, people start comparing AWS with Azure. When I go for Azure trainings, people start comparing Azure with AWS. Now when you do that, you are basically not understanding the concept of the technology. I mean, both are different. Azure is also a cloud solution. AWS is also a cloud solution, but they are different companies. They work on a different platform. If you talk about Microsoft, the underlying layer of Microsoft platform is Hyper-V, whereas the underlying layer of AWS is KVM, right? So they're two different things. So you should never in a lifetime compare these two things. Do we need to know PowerShell? Yes, we need to know PowerShell. If you know PowerShell, your life becomes much more easier. And if you see this, there's a Microsoft PowerShell version in here, which is in beta. So they have not released it fully. So you have to go ahead and create a storage account. I don't want to do that right now because then it will, I'll have to check a lot of things. Just create it in here. So this is my cloud shell. Okay. And you can run the PowerShell, of course. So you see this, it's coming soon, as I said, it's in preview. So you can select PowerShell and do all those things in here. And if I go to VMs, I'll show you their templates for a lot of things. So you have this, so these are my templates. So it might be a possibility that you have a template built by default over there, so you can use that as well. Okay.
So I guess uh, these are the questions what we have. If anybody has any questions, probably you can ask before we end for uh, today. Okay, so I guess uh, we have taken almost all the questions, at least 99% of them, right? In case uh, you want to go ahead and uh, go through the recording, you can just go to the website, visit the website and uh, you'll see the recording over there. And I once again, thanks all. Thank you all for joining in and you have a great day ahead. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!